everyone. Welcome to our lesson dedicated this time to a very important theory in mathematics, in physics, in general understanding of our world. And so today we'll talk about uh, the uh, chaos theory and uh, the most uh, popular theory within it that is butterfly uh, effect and what science uh, says about it and what implication it has on uh, scientific uh, achievements and also on uh, our life um, in general. So uh, this is going to be a, a little different lesson than the usual. Um, I don't want you to remember lots of facts, some maybe, but I want you to understand the basic concept of it and be able to be able to um, understand what um, understand the news about it scientific achievements related to this and so on so I'm not sure if you um, if anyone is able to completely understand the theory of chaos or become a nerd in 45 minutes like those uh, nerds here uh, but uh, I want you to understand the basic concept and the basic ideas and also the most important uh, terms related uh, related to it. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Jurassic Park, the first one. Maybe you're, uh, you're too young to, to remember the, the very first one. But there was this, um, uh, in the first part, there was this mathematician, Dr. Malcolm, who um explained why he thought it was um, unwise to have um, T-Rexes resurrected and all those uh, dangerous uh, dinosaurs. Uh, so uh, the owner of the Jurassic Park said that nothing can go wrong. We promise nothing can go wrong. There are all precautions that were taken and we are sure the safety on visitors. And uh, Dr. Malcolm uh, said the famous sentence, life finds a way. Life always finds a way. Uh, and this means that nature is highly complex. And uh, basically, the only prediction that you can actually make is that it is unpredictable. And the amazing unpredictability uh, of nature is what chaos theory looks at. And uh, why? Because instead of being boring and constant, nature is unpredictable. That means marvelous and, and mysterious. And chaos theory is very important because, uh, for many reasons, but also it tries to manage, the, the capture that beauty of unpredictability uh, by showing its most uh, awesome, uh, awesome patterns. So, uh, let's start with basics. What is chaos? Well, um, philosophically speaking and also aesthetically speaking, uh, it is defined as state of utter confusion and disorder, total lack of organization or any order. Uh, so we all came uh, from chaos and um, chaos is like a void, a void state that is preceding the creation of the universe of cosmos in, for example, in Greek uh, creation myth. But uh, chaos theory is something different because uh, it is actually a branch of mathematics. It's a mathematical subdiscipline and it studies complex uh, system. It's uh, like I said, it's, it's Mathematics is a mathematical uh, concept that um, analyzes system. And uh, there are two um, basic uh, presumptions that systems that appear to be totally orderly can show some chaotic behavior, chaotic patterns. But on the other hand, those that sy systems that seem to be completely random without any order do have actually certain order that cannot be visible um, at the first uh, glance. And uh, chaotic systems are all around us, like Earth weather system, for example. Uh, 
uh, even um, something in a smaller scale like water boil boiling it, uh, and its uh, behavior, the bubbles that appear. Also migratory patterns of birds and also the way that vegetation plants are uh, spread across uh, across land. Uh, so cow theory, those are some, those are some classic uh, examples of uh, chaotic systems. Uh, and uh, if you look at them, for example, at Earth weather system, you see that individual molecules of air are um, act according to basic laws of physics. But global weather patterns are uh, very, very complicated, very complex, and do not behave this way. So this is why we cannot predict weather uh, exactly. So chaos is everywhere. Uh, basically, it's a called the science of surprises, uh, and it teaches us to expect um, unexpected. So like I said, I'd like to introduce some basic uh, concepts and terms. So um, in chaos theory, there are three time types of systems. Uh, there are linear systems. That means that we can precisely predict the behavior. And then there are random systems that we cannot guess at all, and chaotic systems that I mentioned before, for example, Earth, um, Earth uh, weather system. Uh, they are not random, uh, but they are unpredictable in the long term because they are very complex and also they are very, very sensitive. And this is the keyword that they are uh, sensitive. So uh, it was uh, the development of chaos theory was all possible thanks to something that we call quantum mechanical revolution. Uh, before we were living in the deterministic uh, area that we were um, that people believed that things were directly caused by other things. That uh, what goes up has to come down. Uh, that. Uh, every every behavior that is quite obvious with uh, um, a reason and consequence. So this is the terminus, the linear uh, cause. There is linear cause effect um, relation. And um, entire systems uh, were founded on these three. But Quantum mechanical revolution introduced something else, that there are systems that are non-linear linear or chaotic. And um, the initial state can lead to uh, final states with many possible routes, many possible trajectories. Uh, that means that uh, if we, before we were living in a deterministic um, area, uh, era, sorry, that means that all basic laws of physics that we learn uh, are were deterministic, or Newtonian. This is Isaac Newton. Uh, Newtonian laws of physics are completely deterministic. There is a cause, a line that we can predict, and a, a consequence. Uh, so, were they all wrong? Was Newton wrong? Was uh, everyone wrong? Well, uh, no, luckily, because Newtonian laws, the, the classic of physics that we know, uh, explains physics, we might say, of everyday life and describe like ordinary scales, macroscopic scales uh, quite well. We know that if we um, touch the fire, we get uh, burned. This is this this scale um, of events. So cause and effect actually does work in certain systems that I, uh, linear systems that I uh, showed you before. But even, um, even very early, uh, before this quantum uh, mechanics uh, revolution, after, uh, for example, Newton published uh, his uh, his laws, his laws of motion, some people noticed that there was something wrong about them, that they, they didn't always work. Uh, to be specific, uh, there was something wrong with the orbit of a certain planet, and it was the case of Mercury. So uh, they 
Newtonian physics didn't explain the orbit, the way that Mercury uh, appeared to move, to um, go around, uh, go around the sun. So it remained a mystery until the other uh, famous uh, scientists uh, appeared, Einstein, and uh, his theory of general relativity explained why Mercury moves the way uh, it, it does. So uh, uh, it's, uh, why, why is this related to chaos theory? Because uh, it explains that the randomness that we perceive uh, in life, in behavior of planets, in behavior of particles, in behavior of many other uh, elements, has a mixture of two possible components. So the first is chaos, and the other is based so on our own ignorance of the system and how it works. Because uh, we, if we don't really understand how it works, we may perceive it as, as chaotic, uh, as, for example, the orbit of Mercury was perceived. But actually, it is not chaotic. It is... Um, it is related to, uh, to, to mass uh, and general relativity uh, theory, and this is not the subject of our today's uh, uh, lecture, but uh, Mercury sh apparently showed chaotic behavior, but actually it could be explained on the uh, deterministic basis with uh, Einstein theory. So, uh, the basic is they were not all wrong. The Newtonian physics is not all wrong, uh, even though it didn't explain chaotic uh, systems. But uh, where did uh, when did it all begin? The concept of uh, chaotic system. Well, um, quite early, even in 19th century, uh, there were many scientists that were presuming that there were some complex chaotic systems, they didn't call them this way uh, at the time. Uh, they presumed that there were complex systems that have so many elements uh, that their behavior cannot be predicted, but actually they are so complex that they, in 19th century they were not able to calculate it. Uh, there are so many elements that we needed to invent computers very good computers that were required to calculate all the varying possibilities. And this is the reason why chaos theory did not appear before actually the second half of 20th uh, century. So um, Edward Lawrence is uh, a person who developed uh, the concept. He is the father of chaos theory. So what's the story behind it? Uh, in 1961, he, he, he was a meteorologist. Uh, he was using a computer to prepare a model for uh, some um, weather uh, predictions. So uh, one day he got tired, so he ended his his calculations, and uh, and the other day he wanted to restart uh, his computations where he stopped the day uh, before. But actually, he ended the day with this result. With, uh, the result was 0 0.506127. And he felt that uh, it's, uh, it's too long, so he entered only in the computer. The next day, he entered only 0 0.506. And he waited to continue, and he thought that he, he would just continue his calculations. But actually, what he received what, uh, was a completely different uh, weather uh, scenario. He was very much surprised, and uh, he, it turned out that in the program, all the values were calculated to six significant digits, so up to six here. So initially, he assumed that the difference, one part, part in a thousand, would have no consequences, but because of how the equations were made for those climatic or weather uh, models, little errors would first cause tiny errors and then the effect, uh, then it would affect the resulting calculations more and more and more. 
so this is uh, where the concept uh, of chaos theory and actually of butterfly uh, effect uh, began because um, during uh, Edward Lawrence, during a meeting of American Association of Advancement of Science, uh, posed the famous question, does the flap of a butterfly wings in Brazil set off a tornado uh, in Texas? So he was speaking just figuratively, but the concept of the bar, uh, butterfly effect was taken very seriously and was uh, used by popular culture, uh, where the term is used to emphasize the significance of uh, small, apparently small events, uh, apparently small occurrences. So this is uh, actually the uh, other presentation of butterfly effect. What uh, the, the difference of entering the result results uh, results in in time that uh, this is how he discovered also limitations of, uh, of his model uh, so yeah this is how it uh, all was how we all began actually even though like I said in 19th century there were already some ideas that uh, that Newtonian physics does not explain everything, that there is not always something that we can predict totally. So butterfly uh, effect. Uh, I would like you to imagine um, a pool, a pool table. This is a quite accessible example, even if, not, if it's not entirely correct. So. Uh, if you ever played pool or watched uh, playing pool, the small changes in the position of the ball or power or angle of the stick, there are thousands and thousands of uh, possible parameters. It, it can produce very large differences uh, how the, the balls uh, break uh, over the table. This is what, why it is so difficult. Uh, and even the best players cannot predict the way it happens uh, totally. Uh, another example uh, is that if you place two paper boats exactly next to each other on a river, they could follow two completely different routes, end up in two completely different places, even in two completely different oceans. So these are examples of systems. This is a system and this is a system that have an extreme sensitivity in the variation of initial uh, conditions. So uh, why butterfly uh, effect? Well, first, uh, because of this saying of Lawrence that can the butterfly uh, uh, effect. Um, and uh, the other is that um, it, uh, because it was cited as does the flap of butterfly wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas. Uh, so uh, even though in the saying location of the butterfly and, and the meteorological effect varied uh, since, but also the reason that it's called butterfly effect, that concept uh, that stuck to this concept is the graphical uh, representation of um, result of those nonlinear differential uh, equations. So, if we uh, the solution of those equ equations when drawn upon the computer screen is like this. So, uh, the result looks indeed like a butterfly, or um, and are beautifully uh, colored uh, too. So, what I want to show you is an exact. Uh, before your very eyes, exact representation of what uh, this sensitivity to initial conditions means. And what we have here are two columns. I can also send you this sheet if you want to uh, play with it. And in this column, the, there is a, there are uh, there are simply um, uh, some uh, some formulas. And what you can see here. Uh, it's a graphic representation of it. For now, you can see only one color, one graphic representation, uh, and each of them, uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but they're exactly the same 
numbers here and exactly the same formula. So therefore, they're identical. There's only one graphic representation, the orange one. But what happens if we change uh, this number, this number in the red cell? But not, not a lot. Let's just uh, change it like this. You see, I only changed it, not significantly, it was 0 0.4 and 0 0.39. And what, what appeared is a totally different, well, a little bit similar, but a different represent, graphical representation of it. I, I can send you the file, of course you can prepare it yourself, um, but it's all ready to use, to see how it changes, uh, for example, if we add, if we change it a little bit different. Again, totally uh, different results. So you can see that initial condition was here, and the whole calculation goes uh, from here. And a very tiny change resulted in a uh, absolutely uh, different uh, result. So I hope you believe me now. Uh, OK, so um, it has very serious consequences in many fields. Like, for example, you might imagine and think of how uh, how little probable it was for you to be born, actually. How many conditions, uh, how many parameters decided that you are what you are, that you were born at all. But by adding the number of uh, atoms in the world, number of circumstances, the, the odds that you, we exist is actually basically uh, zero. There are other um, very graphic uh, examples of how initial conditions of a, on a small change may affect history, for example. Uh, for, uh, I don't know if you uh, heard that, um, the, of course, the First World uh, War uh, b began for many reasons, but the main trigger was the assassination of uh, Archduke uh, by a Serbian uh, uh, killer. And uh, what happened uh, then was that uh, actually the driver who drove um, the Archduke uh, made a wrong turn. He, he just m made a mistake, went the wrong way, where he met uh, the, uh, the killer who tried to uh, assassinate Archiduke um, before but did not succeed. So he saw the, uh, the killer saw the uh, Archiduke and uh, shot him and his wife and this is how the First World War began and this is, this means millions of victims and complete change of uh, history of map. Actually because of the First uh, World War uh, many uh, countries appeared on the map or reappeared on the map like Poland for example. Uh, so, um, we might say that if the driver hadn't made a mistake and hadn't made a wrong turn, maybe it would not all, um, all happen. And the other example is uh, with um, JFK, assassination of uh, JFK, who of course was a, a president of uh, the USA, and uh, he was very influential in who knows what would have happened if he hadn't been uh, assassinated and uh, actually the the story is that when he was young he had a sports injury a small sport uh, injury just uh, just an accident but it uh, led to a, a condition that he was uh, he was in a pain he had back pain and because of that he had to wear a sort of um, device a, a corset uh, a corset we might say and actually this is probably because he he died because uh, when the killer uh, shot him the, uh, in in uh, um, in a car when the killer shot him the first shot wasn't fatal he, it wasn't dangerous and normally he would drop to the front and avoid the other shot but actually because of this corset he remained uh, he remained straight and the other uh, shots caused 
because uh, his deaths were, were t totally fatal. Uh, so you could say that if he hadn't had a small sports accident years uh, before, then the world would probably look the same. The Cold War, the uh, again geopolitical uh, um, relations, and so on and so on. So uh, as you can see, uh, the, the sensitivity of systems is everywhere. Even the fact that I'm talking to you right now might uh, change something because you're not doing something else and we don't know uh, all our actions actually influence other people. Uh, so uh, as I promised, one thing is understanding the basic concept of it, which I tried to do, and the other uh, thing is to explain some uh, relevant uh, words that you maybe not, not become a nerd, uh, but um, understand what is being uh, spoken of, that some terms are relevant to chaos uh, theory. So the first one is uh, so-called uncertainty uh, principle. Uh, and um, the, the statements is actually related, is actually related to quantum mechanics. Uh, in general, it is impossible uh, to measure two properties of uh, of an object at the same time with infinite precision. So we can be sure either of one parameter like position uh, and not be 100% uh, sure of, of another. Um, parameter like energy, like time. So we can be sure only of one parameter of a quantum uh, object. Um, Self-similarity is another very important term. I will come back to that later because in general it allows molecules, particles, crystals to um, mimic, to, um, to copy their own shape in a thing they make. Example, a snowflake, how a snowflake is, is built. It copies itself um, many, many times. Complex systems, of course, this, um, they, we already presented them. The complex systems have many, many uh, parameters. And um, there is also something that is called attractor. Attractor represents a state in this chaotic system that seems to be responsible to helping the system settle down. So come from chaos to, to order, to, to slow it down, to calm it down, uh, let's say. But uh, on the other hand, uh, there's generator and those are in turn tell them elements in the system that seem to be responsible for the chaotic behavior in the system. So we have attractor and generator. Attractor seems to calm it down, and generator seems to cause all this chaotic uh, behavior. Uh, yeah. So this is this was the starting kit of terms, and two main uh, main concepts of uh, chaos theory are, or two main components, are the idea that systems no matter how complex they may be, have some underlying order, even if we don't see it, if we, we don't perceive it. There is an order, we just cannot see this pattern. And on the other hand, that even the very simple or small systems and events can cause very complex behaviors or events, like in butterfly. Uh, I mentioned that I will come back to the uh, one of the terms here, and it was self-similarity. Remember, like in snowflakes, and self-similarity uh, is is the reason why we have fractals. And this is another term I would like you to remember or um, have in mind that they have something to do with uh, chaos theory at least. Because to me, fractals are actually the representation of beauty in, in mathematics. Uh, so fractals are basically, let's say, two things. They are exquisite structures produced uh, by nature that you can see here. I will show you more, uh, more examples later. 
and uh, they are created by repeating a simple process over and over and over again. Uh, fractals are images of uh, dynamic system. It's like a image representation of chaos, chaos state itself. Mm. So nature is full of fractals. You can see the leaves here, but uh, trees, rivers, coast, coastlines, clouds, seashells, or all fractals. Uh, but these are fractals that are we can touch that uh, or uh, we can meet in nature. But uh, there are also um, abstract fractals. Uh, for example, this is a, a very famous one. If you see this, you will know that it's Mandelbrot set. But these fractals are theoretical. They are abstract. They can be generated by a computer that is cal calculating a simple equation over and over and over again. The idea of fractals is that the same element is repeated infinitely. So in nature, it's not infinite. The, trees, uh, the tree finishes somewhere. But in theoretical fractals that are calculated, it's infinite. Uh, if you go uh, infinitely deep, you'll see the same element and if you, uh, that repeat um, without, uh, without end. So to draw this, Man, for example, this Mandelbrot set, a uh, very famous fractal, uh, it is imp impossible to draw it exactly, but uh, it can be approximated, of course. So this is not exact result of this uh, equation, but it's uh, an, uh, sort of um, approximation. So, uh, what, why do we need chaos theory? Does it help us in anything, or is it just a theory that uh, scientists are interested in and it's very theoretical? Well, it has very practical uh, applications, and the possibility of use is basically endless in various, various domains. Uh, in stock market, to predict trends, uh, uh, financial trends uh, in general, market trends. In biology, for example, how the virus in an epidemic is going to uh, to spread. And uh, in um, scientific research, how small changes of chemistry in uh, of Earth triggered uh, the explosion of life, but also in social networking, in game theory, uh, in big dat data um, analy uh, analytics and so on and so on and so on, there are, the applications are endless. Actually, I would like to show you one quite funny uh, application of the, uh, chaos theory. It's a so-called Swiss cheese model. These are slices of uh, Swiss cheese. And actually, it is used um, in aviation safety. It's a model of um, causes of accidents. Uh, it is used in risk analysis and uh, risk management in aviation safety, but also in engineering, uh, in healthcare, and uh, to, to uh, ensure security. And um, Exact, uh, we know that uh, usually that for the aviation, uh, for the plane crash to happen, uh, many, uh, many other, uh, many different circumstances need to uh, align, and uh, we're trying to prevent them. We have safe systems, but this uh, this Swiss cheese model represents what happens in if uh, if something fails. That uh, that means it actually those holes, holes in slices, represent failures that take place. What might uh, go wrong? Mm, there is a fire, for example, of ta or some device goes down. And if only if those holes in the uh, cheese slices uh, align or in one line. Then there is a major uh, incident and other consequences. 
So this is a very popular model to uh, assess hazard, uh, especially in, uh, in aviation. Uh, but uh, Carroll's theory began with weather predictions with uh, Edward Lawrence, who was a meteorologist, and uh, it is a very uh, um, popular but also controversial, controversial in discussion of climate modeling. So uh, climate uh, change skeptics, or, or not only them, say that if it is a chaos, so how can climate be predictable? How can we say that the climate is changing, that we are causing it, if the weather is totally uh, chaotic? Where uh, actually maybe cow theory does not explain the uh, climate uh, change, but it not, does not make it uh, a hoax, doesn't make it uh, fake, because the trick lies in the statistics. Uh, in those, in the, some models that are that have an extreme level of sensitivity to initial conditions, like I uh, showed you on this uh, graph in Excel, for example, uh, it turns out that the long-term uh, results are quite uh, stable. Uh, so this this means that. Climate change is means seeing how the structure uh, changes, while not being too concerned about the the route, about the trajectory that you're on. It concentrates on results. It's called the probabilistic approach to uh, to prediction, and um, this means that even though uh, weather is totally chaotic, the general trend. Can be uh, can be predicted general trends in cl uh, climate change in average temperature. It means that uh, unfortunately we cannot predict where the hurricane happens uh, in uh, uh, three months, but we can um, predict that with certain scenarios we have certain results in, for example, ocean acidification. But uh, you should have in mind that these are different scenarios and what we give to those uh, models, what we feed them with, uh, has, uh, of course, a giant effect on the uh, result. Another thing that is quite a new idea, very new actually, is so-called inexact supercomputing. So we are uh, used to the concept that um, the computers are very, very, very exact, uh, up to 100 significant digits. Uh, they can calculate everything to this uh, correctly. Well, the new concept is called inexact computing or inexact supercomputing, uh, uh, which can be could be used as a way of modeling. Uh, chaotic systems such as climate. Uh, it basically says that uh, it's very much more efficient to not calculate so exactly up to 100 uh, significant digits. It's, it's, we use less time and less energy with the same uh, results. But this is uh, quite a new concept and not accepted actually by all the scientists. So. If you're interested, you can read more about it.